Well, my name is Vivian Goldman. I'm standing at Rough Trade East on a very magical day for me personally, it being June the 29th, that being the day on which I first saw the world. And also, it's been actually my first ever show here live at Rough Trade East. I've never really done a full Vivian Goldman show in this lifetime. So, altogether, it's been a very, very exciting hour. You know, the songs that I was singing, uh, you know, I had a fantastic troupe over the period of 79 to 82 when I recorded this music and, and I was able to work with my mates who are incredibly clever and they include people from Public Image Limited, uh, Bruce Smith, uh, Keith Levine, John Lydon, Vicky Aspinall from The Raincoats, the band that I was with, The Flying Lizards, uh, along with uh, David Cunningham, Steve Beresford, David Toot, and Viv Albertine, and uh, of course, Robert Wyatt, the incredible Robert Wyatt, did play with me on my solo record. And then um, the duo Chantage that I had when I was in Paris with my dear compadre, Eve uh, Blouin. And uh, that's been little known here until this very moment. So more than a trip down memory lane, you know, because People are finding a lot of new resonance and relevance in songs like It's Only Money and Private Armies, you know. I'm speaking to you today when there's been a lot of killing around the world and uh, money's going up and down like a seesaw. So although I didn't have that in mind when I recorded these songs all those years ago, they seem to be still all too appropriate for the times. But at the same time, I like to think that the jolliness in them will help give us the strength to combat any difficult times. He's holding up the artistic process, I don't know. <laughs> so why don't we hit it? Thank you, Grant.
enjoyed this very memorable birthday and the release of my resolutionary record on this thing. Woo! This is just the beginning of uh, perhaps arguably the most gripping half hour of your life. So it's kind of lucky you're here. All now, <laughs> first of all, we're going to have a quick word from our sponsor. And it goes like this. Yes. I want to thank Norwegian Air because they got me here. <laughs> They're the hunky punky airline. And they got me here, girl. Good. So now, in deference to uh, the many moods of Goldman, I'm going to regale you, before we go back into song, with a brief reading from my great as yet unpublished novel, The Non-Stop Throb. So... Before we go any further, I want to say, yes, it is that semi-autobiographical first novel, but no one person is any one person. I just put all the experiences into a blender, so please, nobody sue me. Okay, so here we go. <coughs> okay, first of all, I better tell you, as it's semi-autobiographical, there's this writer character called Anya, and there's, uh, she's very close friends with a, a, a girl musician, <laughs> as it goes, who's also a writer. So, and this girl called Thrill, she is just starting her singing career, her supposedly aided and abetter, abetted by a producer named Stretch. Thrill seemed to be having more success than I in the romance stakes, judging by the glimpse I caught of her discussing a musical point with her new producer, Stretch, in the studio that weekend. They'd retreated into the cramped tape room to decide the speed at which she should play her new song, Keep Em Keen, a babbling, semi-spoken rant about the ways women are supposed to act to get a man. It was scabrous, salacious, and gloriously obnoxious. Returning from the loo, I accidentally opened the wrong door and glimpsed her, kneeling on the floor between the tape decks, head pistoning up and down like a hyperactive oil derrick, her slight body framed by a pair of long denim legs ending in cowboy boots. By the worn patina on their cowboy boots, shall you know them, it was stretch. Quickly, quietly closing the door, I hoped that he would prove an effective Svengali, the Phil Spector to her Ronnie, but with a happier ending. But evidently, even good head was no guarantee of an easy ride. Thrill strode back into the studio, stretched casually meandering back in after her, and took up a cocky stance at the mic. She struck a bold yet subtle chord on her guitar and launched into a delicate, jabbing filigree of rhythm that surprised me. Where had she picked it up? Perhaps all the time I imagined her moodily toying with razors in somebody's bathroom, she was actually practicing woodshedding, as the musos used to say. She picked up speed and began moaning a soft but urgent harmony while the beat pumped along, reminding me of the swift, definite rhythm with which her head had dipped and swooped on Stretch's dick. That night's session was graced by the presence of the legendary guitarist, 
Morgan Bloom, whose mastery of blues rock my fellow scribes had swooned over for years. The so rare it was almost non-existent bootleg of Morgan Bloom jamming with Steve Metal was on everyone's all-time indispensable discs list. Morgan was a shambling eccentric, almost totally inarticulate, who always looked as if he was in his pajamas, no matter what he was wearing. Nonetheless, his reputation was heroic, and his licks had inspired countless bedroom air guitarists. He had deigned to come to Thrill's session because he was a friend of Stretch and liked to maintain a reputation for being in touch with current trends, such as our Thrill appeared to have become. I suddenly realized that if this singing thing actually worked for her, I might be commissioning articles on Thrill. The prospect made me smile. A good transformation is always entertaining. Thrill's guitaring lifted the song. The studio musician's regular stretch henchmen seemed grudgingly impressed, nodding and raising their eyebrows at one another in oblique approbation. Everyone was too busy being cool to express avert enthusiasm. So. That was great, I called out to her when her last notes had echoed into silence. Then Morgan whispered in Stretch's ear. The producer nodded. I could just see Thrill's new glow switch off, replaced by her more familiar paranoid jitters. Slouching over to the center of the room as Thrill looked on in alarm, Morgan plugged in his famous red custom Gibson. The engineer rolled the tape and the legendary Axeman proceeded to lay down a blistering blues with lots of screaming feedback that clashed with Thrill's stark guitar buzz so loudly that she'd been reduced to an intermittent scratch, a side woman on her own session. He smashed Thrill with his hard rock. He mashed her, bashed her, and thrashed her. Yet, famous though his technique was, it was old school, predictable, in tune with convention, and discordant with my friend's original approach. Her lyrics that sounded smudged as if she'd cried writing them, and her calculatedly abrupt switches of tempo and timbre that made silence be a sound. This time round, though, the musos were not backward in coming forward. Hearty cries of, nice work, Morgan, you really are the business, my man, and so on, bounced around the studio. Thrill froze for a moment, then marched into the control room, flicked on the switch that carried audio through to the big room, and yelled at Stretch so all could hear, wipe it! Are you nuts? That was some classic Morgan Bloom, Stretch snapped back. I'm never going to wipe that. It makes the track. Ha! Makes a track without me, all right? His thrill. You better wipe me then right now because I don't want my playing anywhere near that slimy reptile's. His head's so big he probably sucks himself off. His village idiot act doesn't fool me. The man's a snake. Oh, come on, Thrill. Morgan's not just a guitar god. He's a mate. He's doing you a favor. He's doing himself a favor, you mean, trying to be down with the kids. I wish you'd do what I want, as this is my song, but I can tell you're too far up Morgan's bum to even see me. Come on, Anya, let's get out of this dump. I scrabbled all our belongings together and followed her out, hearing the musicians mutter behind us, she must be on the rag. Or moan a old coward, does she think he is? Just ignore her, Morgan man. She'll never be anything. Just stretch his latest bird. You mean, stretch his latest ex? Thrill shouted back as we slammed the studio door behind us. Thank you. Okay, based on true life, but no names. <laughs> No, back to the singing.
just sat in their mini Wallace Skinner beat shit, shit out of a person on the pavement Blood everywhere Sets of initials with licenses to kill Brand name businessman putting a bill Blood everywhere Solid seemed to shatter into shards and expectations almost crashed, just more dreams deferred. People taking to the streets and setting cars on fire, sick of what their world's become, wanting something higher. Music helped us through one mess, now we're in another. Only way that we'll get through is if we stick together. Like-minded folk, we have no choice. We've got to be our own private army. Mobilize, mobilize, use whatever we've got. If the heavy metal boys or the boys in blue don't like the look of you, you better watch out. Don't like the look of you, you better watch out. And one last word, if you want to eliminate immigrants, economic or political, you better watch out. Always know, tomorrow, that dispossessed, hungry and seemingly scary alien stranger, he could be you. So, we people have to be as flexible as elastic, because
because the planet just isn't. Where will we be able to run to when half the world is burning and the other half is looting? So we're tough. We got no choice. And we're rough, raising our voice. But we still need to be kind, kind, kind all the time. Always be kind, kind, kind. Keep it in mind. And a special thanks to Adrian Sherwood for this dynamite dance. Private armies. Let's be our own private army. Thank you. So, yes, thank you. Okay. Long drink. And this one's for Julian Firth. Special request. <laughs> Ten pence for the dryer Yes, that was how we met My laundry bag was broken My clothes were soaking wet I felt I needed hugging You needed board and lodging I can't complain, we went down the drain Seems like I can't get away from you Even in the laundry Seems like I can't get away from you My socks see your socks in the dryer and your jeans run into my shirt. You always, you were, always untidy. were untidy and actually I could look at somebody in the audience now and almost no, no. I'll hold back, I'll hold back. No negative vibes. You want some coffee round at my place It all seemed just a lot But you haven't left there two weeks later Your hair's all over the bar It's good to get you to go I had to learn to say no Actually something I'm still having trouble with I can't complain, we went down the drain Seems like I can't get away from you Even in the long Seems like I can't get away from you Even in the laundry Now my socks see the socks in the dryer And your jeans right into my shirt Oh no! I can't complain, we went down the drain People often ask me, is the Laundrette a true story? Well, I think for the sake of future journalists, why deprive them of a good question? So I'm not going to tell you right now, you'll have to guess. But there, you know, there is something that hits home about this sort of mental random encounter that seems to strike a chord. I think nowadays, the same thing happens, but just online. Special thanks to George Oban for the sinuous bass line that inspired this song.
Okay, well, people get ready. It's our last, our last number. So. Disco. Don't abuse me, dear Amanda. Even though I owe you money, I am waiting for a letter full of money from my mother. She was on her way to post it when a man took him to get her. So she had to sit in the car. She went to Some 
some of the most fantastic artists in the world joining me at this great moment. It's only wonderful to be with you tonight, and I want a special thanks to Public Image Limited, John Lydon, Keith Levine, Jeanette Lee, uh, and to the Vicky from the Raincoats, as well as and all Adrian Sherwood, David Cunningham, Steve Beresford, David T, Viv Albertine, the Flying Lizards, all the people who helped me make this music that we're sharing tonight for the very first time, decades after it was born. It's been wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Happy birthday, baby! Oh, I'm in the book here somewhere, yeah. I should actually know exactly the page, shouldn't I? Here I am. Whoa. See, look. You see? It's me, isn't it? Double me. 